Okay, at this point, y'all gotta meet Jay. They're really incredible, and they have a YouTube channel all their own, which I'll link in the doobly-doo. Over the summer, they got our picture phones working again, which was just amazing, and now they're really excited to help with the ringing machine project. While I was on another cross-country drive, Jay actually got the DC motor spinning. They figured out where the commutator and field connections were and just applied voltage to it with a portable power supply that we had lying around. It took some work to loosen the frozen bearings, but after that was all done, it just ran. It was super exciting. Now that the motor is spinning, let's follow along with what we did next. So, he spins. This guy's really noisy. This is the gearbox here. And there's a worm gear uh, that transfers power to these drums. And if I put some pressure on the drums, you can see the noise kind of stops. There. But it's not the gearing in here that's bad. I think what's bad is this guy. There's a leather coupler behind this plate. And the power that's being delivered from the motor to this plate and to the drive to the worm gear in here, the power is not steady because behind this plate is a, that leather coupling and it's worn out. So if I put pressure on here to take up that wear, take up that play in the leather coupling, the noise quiets down a lot. So what I'm gonna do is take this off, take a look at that leather, see if I, what I can do, probably end up replacing that leather and then that noise will quiet down. But he spins. So I got the, I couldn't get this, this coupling plate off. So I took the entire gearbox off, which I didn't want to do because I, in the process, all of the spacers just fell out onto the floor. So great, I'll have one more thing for me to figure out, but it's pretty clear that this is gonna need some love before this thing slides off into my hand. But the nice thing is, is that there isn't any real serious wear here like I've seen on the other machines. So it's very apparent that they didn't run this machine very much, which makes sense because it's the DC machine. So this is the leather coupler that's very shriveled and worn out. So it's, uh, you know, it's gonna get smaller and kind of dry out with age and it should be tight on these pins and it's very much not. So what I think I will do is jam some toothpicks in there for now. Found another one of these and put it on and it looks not perfect, but it's a lot better than, than the first one was. And this was just in our spare parts cabinets from one of the other six million ringing machines that I have. So now what we have to do is get that back on there and somehow figure out those shims. I will spare you the grunting and the screaming. I'll be right back. Well, that worked. We'll probably just end up getting a bunch more of those couplings made for us by Gardico, a local gasket company. They've done this before for our panel motors, and the couplers they made for that have lasted for years without needing to be changed. Now, Gardico's not going to use leather, of course, but rubber technology has come a long way since the 1920s, and now you can easily get materials that exceed the requirements of the initial design in large quantities. So I'm not worried about that. Next, Jay and I worked on getting the old machine to make some sounds. The first thing we tried was the tone alternator. This makes dial tone, ring back tone, and something called high tone, which was used for receiver off hook situations and other things. So the next step here is to get the tone alternator working. 
Now that the machine is mostly spinning, I'm really curious to see if it will actually produce any tones. Now in the, a previous video, we went into the tone alternator in a lot of detail, so I'm not gonna spend time here rehashing it. If you wanna know how the tone alternator works, I'll put a link up in the, the, the here and in the doobly-doo. But um, basically what we have to do is excite the feel winding in this thing, and then there's a set of two gears that also get excited by that field and then induce uh, an alternating current in some pickup coils that go around here. But I checked the BSP and it showed a picture of this resistor. Um, special fields, excitement, current limiting resistor thing. And I was like, oh no, do we have that? Now the reason I was curious about that resistor is that the BSP and the schematic don't give values for it. They just say it was set at the factory and if you need a new one, contact the factory because I guess each of these field windings is slightly different and each resistor is set to accommodate those field windings. Now, we got this ringing machine with its table and with all of its component parts. So it stood to reason that the resistor should be around and lo and behold, I found it. This is the resistor here. It was bolted to the bottom of the ringing machine table and I just unscrewed it and brought it over here temporarily so that we can play with it. Um, it's a GE resistor. It's a big ceramic guy in this metal enclosure and it says 28 ohms. So basically what we do is I have 48 volts for the field coming from that guy there, going into the resistor, this red alligator clip out of the resistor into the field, then through the field, out this black wire and into green alligator clip, which obviously it's not hooked up right now. And then I have the output of the tone alternator going into this little transformer that I found. It seemed like it would be fine. Um, and we can tap off the secondary here with a headset or whatever we want and hear some tones. We got sort of a dial tone. Oh yeah, dial tone for sure. Does it change volume? Yes, very much. Oh yeah. We gotta hook up a little speaker to this. So we're starting to look at, uh, pardon the weird zoomy video, I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff in the frame. We're starting to look at the interruptions coming off the low speed interrupters, that's these things, and we have, we hooked a light bulb up and we're just watching the interruptions. It seems like they were a bit slow. Um, next thing that we gotta do is figure out what speed this machine should be going at anyway. Now, I could use a tachometer, but one of the easiest things that we can do is look at the outputs of the, of the tone generator, and we see that one of them is just a straight 500 hertz. So we could use Jay's FFT thing on their phone and just m adjust the field current until the FFT reads 500. about right. So what we can do now, I'm going to give you the phone real quick. Now if we play, if we play the tones, they should sound right. There's ring back. Okay. Yeah. And then, whoops. Here is dial tone. Get that on there. And then dial tone. Great. Sounds really good. <laughs> All right. After that, we hooked up the field windings to the 20 hertz AC ringing output to see if it would ring a real bell. And what do you know?
All right, kill it so Colin doesn't get pissed. <laughs> ringing machine. It's ringing. The lamp on the 20 hertz output actually looked very steampunkish and cool. And I think I'm going to put the lamp somewhere on this thing just to keep that vibe going. Just for fun, I grabbed the slow motion video and you could see the filaments wiggling back and forth at 20 hertz. It's really quite hypnotic to watch. The next steps for us are to get this board working again. This is a little bit more complicated since we're running an older machine that wasn't designed for use with this equipment. Even though the principles of operation are the same, we're probably going to have to do some tweaking to get it all working properly. Finally, our volunteer Eric is making us a new table to place this machine on. The original machines were on a custom wide table that would fit both of them, but because we're only displaying this one at the museum, we're going to need a special narrower table. So that's it for now. Uh, I've already got the next part of this video series figured out, so stay tuned because it should come out soon. In that video, we'll have the board all wired up so we can go into detail about how it works with close-ups and full explanations. And Colin's got the DMS-10 almost ready to power up, so we hope to get to that after the holiday break. If you like this kind of thing, please click the like and subscribe button. It helps the silly YouTube robot recommend our videos to more people. And we'll see you soon. Until next time, thanks for watching.